Here's the Caldi Mini. Handmade in uh, South Korea by a very skilled craftsman. They're very affordable. They go for anywhere from $250 to $300. Um, the model that I bought comes with this one as, <laughs> as method of propulsion. And um, you learn really fast that, um, well, it's not that convenient to be standing and doing this constantly when you can use that hand to write time or temperatures or something like that. So mine got modified. That's what I want to share. Started out, this thing here is tilted a little bit this way. So right now it is currently level, but when it comes, it is tilted this way for the beans to stay inside the drum. And obviously it has the hand crank on the right hand side here. Um, I thought, well, there got to be a better way around that. So this is what I did. I ordered, and of course links will be provided. I ordered a synchronous motor, an AC synchronous motor. From Amazon. I chose the one that goes about uh, 60 to 70 R uh, RPM. I think actually it's 70 to 80. It turns out it's spinning about um, 67 RPM. So works really well. This little unit comes with a power cord with an on off switch. Comes with a bracket and then uh, I just uh, had some angle iron aluminum that I um, Drilled a couple of holes, and let me see here. Get there you go, so I can see what I'm doing. Drilled a couple of holes into the body, four screws, stainless steel, interface with this, and then uh, it became rather interesting because that axle that you see here is actually six millimeter. So the axle on this one here is a six millimeter axle. Uh, I could either get a conversion between a six millimeter axle and on the machine motor it's seven. Um, so I bought this one. It's a coupler for trial and error. It actually accepts seven millimeter on one side, six on the other side. However it only has two screws so that it's not very easy to center everything just in the middle. I would have liked to have seen four screws on each side of the axle and then in that case I could have um, adjusted a little bit of, I can adjust it a little bit better so I got one of those on order uh, however I drilled out the hole in the drum right in there if you can see that I'm not sure you can but that axle going into the drum is tightened with this one screw that you see here and uh, I drilled that out very carefully. If you'd never drilled stainless steel before, a lot of lube and very, very careful. And uh, drilled that out to a seven millimeter. I bought a seven millimeter stainless steel shaft. So now I have seven here and seven on the pump. And then I just drilled out this coupler since it was gonna be temporary anyway. Works really well. Before I did it, um, obviously, when you empty this drum normally, you literally lift the whole thing out and dump the beans. Now what you do is you simply just tilt this upward, just like you do with a, uh, their bigger brother. You just tilt the whole thing since it's now bolted down. The other thing I had to get done here is instead of this bracket that normally sits up here holding the bearings in place, I uh, drilled two new holes for the bearings and bolted them straight onto the body here and bracket is just bolted on so I don't lose it but I don't use that bracket anymore. What I achieved by that is instead of the bearings uh, helping sitting on a little bit of an angle the bearings are now level so that the mouth of the trommel or drum call it whatever you want is now perfectly level and the trommel mouth or the drum mouth rolls and makes contact with the entire part of the bearing not just a little bit of it for an uneven wear. I tested it before and it turns out that with this on a level setting here it actually can hold 
exactly um, 250 pounds, uh, 250 grams rather, and they will not come out of the mouth. So it actually works pretty good. I don't usually roast more than 200 grams anyway, so to me that really doesn't bother me at all. Works really well. Um, the way that this flange is welded on to the trommel or the drum, there's a little bit of a wobble in it. And uh, my fix is if I get tired of that, since it's not perfect, I can always replace this little blue coupler with a flexible coupler and that would take off the slag. There's not too much in it, but let me show you. So literally just flip this switch. And there you go. You make out, you can see that there is a little bit of play in the axle. Not a whole lot, but I also like that because instead of now riding in that bushing there, down here, instead of my fat finger, instead of this bushing here, riding down here, bushings are good, but eventually stainless and stainless, it will wear out. Instead of that riding here, it's now the bearing inside of the synchronous motor that is now taking the load, which I really, really prefer, and it's much, much smoother. And here it is spinning about 67 revolutions per minute, and it just works really, really well. A few things you have to be careful about is this obviously is hot with 115 volts, so don't touch it. Cover it up if you're going to do this. Make sure that you protect yourself. Um, haven't quite figured out what, if anything, that I want to do. I'm okay with it just like this, but that's something that you will have to. You can get DC 12 volt motors. Um, I didn't want to buy a transformer. You can get this unit with a motor already built in, but I believe it is a DC 12 volt. I'm not sure. But from what I've read, it was a DC-12, and then you have to buy a converter. Not a big deal if you want to, but I just didn't want to. So anyway, didn't cost a lot and works really well. Obviously, have bought this uh, stainless steel stove that is, uh, matter of fact, I will uh, see if I can capture that. Might not be able to get that, but that is that. Works really well. Time to roast some beans.